Brian O'Leary here with you once more. We've got another story, baseball story today, about Willie Stargell, former Pittsburgh Pirate great. Willie played, gosh, well over 20 years in the big leagues. 1979, in his age 39 season, old guy for Major League Baseball standards anyway, Stargell shared the National League Most Valuable Player Award, which he split with Keith Hernandez, who was playing with the St. Louis Cardinals at the time. Uh, Keith and Willie were both first basemen, both had great years. But Willie also earned the World Series MVP and the Pittsburgh Pirates that he played on. The We Are Family team, they won the World Series. But this hits close to home here. So on June 18th that, of that same championship season, Stargell hit a home run into the balcony of Portland, Oregon's Multnomah Athletic Club. This piece of obscure trivia is not a big deal to most folks. Indeed, to someone who not who did not grow up in Portland, Oregon, from the 1960s, say, through the early 1990s, this feat means absolutely nothing. But to baseball-obsessed fans in Portland, to Portlanders, of a certain vintage, this home run, and Willie Stargell himself, means everything. Stargell's blast, even though it was only in batting practice, not even batting practice, it's actually in a home run derby, but I'll get to that in a second. But it is, and or was and is, the stuff of legends. As far as Portland baseball fans are concerned, away from the field, pops Stargell, well, he might as well have worn a red flannel shirt and hung out with a blue ox named Babe. He was that legendary. Still to this day in Portland, people of my age and a bit older. On this day, Stargell's Pirates were in town to play their AAA affiliate, which is the Portland Beavers, in an exhibition at Portland's Civic Stadium. It's no longer there. It's... Uh, I mean, technically, yeah, Civic Stadium's gone. It's it's kind of like Anakin Skywalker turning into Darth Vader. Civic Stadium is gone, and some horrendous soccer stadium is in its place. Some of the bones are still there, but anyway, not important. But as was customary with these games where you played, the big league team came down to play the affiliate, which they don't really do that much anymore, if if ever. I don't know. Uh, but a home run derby was held before the game. So those are oftentimes the only home run, home run derbies you'd ever experience as a fan was this uh, batting practice home run derby before the game uh, with the affiliates. Anyhow, Portland's general manager, David Hirsch, he was handing out $100 bills to any player who went deep, but he made a special offer to Stargell. Stargell was a huge man, big power, um, great, great player, Hall of Famer, of course. He says, Willie, I'll give you a grand if you knock it up into that balcony. Well, the, the Multnomah Club, its balcony was 403 feet from home plate. That was well past the right field fence, and the seating for the balcony was over 55 feet above the playing surface. Interesting thing about this right field fence if you remember the early 90s, I think it was Rodney McRae who, gosh, I can't remember if he was playing for Portland or playing for uh, another team that played Portland, but you'll famously remember it was a huge ESPN highlight or low light of the day where he ran through the fence and the play, the flavor pack sign ran right through the wooden fence. But anyway, the, the Multnomah Club was, gosh, it, was, it had to have been 30 50 feet past that and 55 feet above the surface where members of the Multnomah Club and their guests can watch the baseball game, just like old Tiger Stadium say. Anyway, Willie, he negotiated with the general manager. He said, make it 2,000. Hirsch, the general manager, he agreed. 
And the BP pitcher, the batting practice pitcher, served one up and Pops knocked a man a shot into the sky and it landed in the Max balcony. His Pirates teammates erupted out of the third base dugout, hugged Stargell. Awestruck Portlanders would talk about it nearly every time the Mac and Civic Stadium were mentioned in the same sentence. And when Stargell inevitably came up in conversation talking baseball and back in the day or even today, the topic inevitably changed to the balcony. Did you know Willie Stargell hit it up in the balcony of the Mac? Inevitably comes up still to this day. Naturally, that 1979 season culminated in a championship for the We Are Family Buckos, the Pirates Club. They beat the Orioles. Well, in 1980, the next season, the defending world champs came back to Portland. This time, the legend of Stargell brought the fans to Goose Hollow, the neighborhood where Civic Stadium is or was. They brought the fans to Goose Hollow in droves, all 26,912 of them. In what has to be a record baseball crowd or a fire marshal's worst nightmare at that stadium, I mean, a bi- a huge crowd was 15,000 back in my day. So I say whether Civic Stadium had such a capacity or not, close to 10,000 of those seats weren't probably all that safe. And there was a similar frenzy when Fernando Valenzuela started his comeback with the California Angels. Longtime Dodger, Phenom, all that. Uh, Fernando pitched against Portland for the Edmonton Trappers, I believe it was 1991. It was the biggest crowd I've ever seen at Civic Stadium, and I'll include that uh, with the exhibition with the defending world champion Philadelphia Phillies Club, starring Mike Schmidt and Pete Rose, after the Pirates stopped being the affiliate of Portland we had several years of the Phillies and those clubs um, as the affiliate. Uh, anyway, and then they switched to the Twins later on, but I'll get to that in a second. I was in the left, fle- left field bleachers for both the Fernando Edmonton versus Portland game and the Phillies against Portland when Schmidt and Rose were on the team. But anyway, one day a sports writer asked Willie Stargell, he said, hey, Willie, what is the secret to your success? It's very simple, Pop said. I listen to the umpire right before the game starts. What do you mean? What's the umpire tell you? This guy asked. Don't you hear what he says right before the game starts? Asked Stargell. I guess, but I don't, I don't really know, said the writer. He says, play ball. Okay, so I play ball, said Willie. I don't work ball. That's passion. Your work is your play. Your play is your work. You don't have to go to work. You get to go play. So make yourself passionate about your work and your play. Love what you do. Become the greatest. And if you want help figuring out how to do it, we're here to help. Go to O'Leary.coach, H-T-T-P, all that stuff. O'Leary.coach. That should get you there. If not, uh, leave a comment in this video. You can also go to O'LearyLetter.com or BrianDOleary.com slash letter where you can get uh, emails like this. It's an email that I contempor- or, uh, just went off on. A uh, little jag off the email. But anyway, um, postscript here, folks. A dozen or so years after Stargell, after his feet, Minnesota Twins farmhand Bernardo Brito. This guy was a real-life Pedro Serrano, if you remember Major League. But Portland, at that point, had been the Minnesota Twins uh, farm club, AAA. So Brito served a similar role, really, in the mythology of Civic Stadium and amongst the fans of baseball in Portland, except... Brito was right-handed, and he took dead aim at the Oregonian building, which was across the street and behind the left field bleachers. However, different. Bernardo Brito was a different breed altogether. Like I said, he was a real-life Pedro Serrano. Uh, he, 
hit missiles. This guy was a freak. Dominican guy. Uh, didn't get a whole lot of uh, action in the big leagues, but in Portland, he was a legend because he did this stuff during games. It wasn't batting practice, although he might have well done some Serrano, Stargell type activity in batting practice. He did this stuff during games. Just, I mean, absolutely incredible for anybody watching and uh maybe where have you been bernardo brito we need to get that out if anybody's watching this video uh we need to um, find out where bernardo is these days and uh love to get him on the on the show uh if we could uh get a if he speaks any english it'd be better so but for more real life mythology it was 1995. Could have could have been 94. I don't remember exactly. I think it was 95. But uh, all American and future All Pro safety lawyer Malloy played for the Patriots famously, and uh, gosh, I think he played for the Bills and perhaps the Falcons also. But had his heyday in the pros with the Super Bowl champion Patriots. He was he played outfield for the Washington Huskies where he went to college up in, and they were in the Pac-10 North back then. It's different than it is now uh, and certainly different than it will be uh, next year. But the Washington Huskies, Washington State Cougars, Portland State Vikings, Oregon State Beavers, University of Portland Pilots, and the Gonzaga Bulldogs were all in this conference called the Pac-10 North. And the typical, uh, the rest of the pac Ten at the time, it was Cal, Stanford, USC, UCLA, Arizona, Arizona State. They were in what was called the Pac-10 South or the Six Pack, and they were different conferences. These guys hardly played. It was non-league if they did play. So, two different conferences, uh, bizarre. But either way, uh, that's why Portland State had a league game. They played league games against the Huskies back then. Portland State also doesn't have a baseball team anymore. The great Jack Dunn was their skipper for many years, mentor of mine. Uh, that uh, You can find more about that, actually, if you go to runatthunder.com. That has a free ebook. talks about a lot of baseball history in Portland, Oregon. Uh, this Willie Sargell uh, story might be in Volume 2. But anyway, Lawyer, I'm, I'm sitting there with... 50 to 100 other fans, maybe, maybe. It was People didn't go to the games, at, um, Portland, Portland State games down at the stadium very often. Uh, but anyway, I'm watching the game. I see this big dude. I knew of Lawyer Malloy as a safety for the, the, uh, the Huskies in the next springtime. He was drafted in the beginning of the second round by the Patriots. Anyway. He is up there at bat with the black and yellow Easton, iconic of the time, two and three quarter barrel, wearing Nike Sharks football shoes that guys would wear on grass. If the, uh, anyway, look up Nike Sharks football shoes at high tops. He's wearing those things because um, Civic Stadium was artificial turf. It's actually the first outdoor artificial f- turf stadium. There was, and then I think uh, Kansas City uh, Royal Stadium was the second. I believe I have that right, but either way. Malloy's up there. He absolutely crushes a ball off a Portland State pitcher to dead center field. So you got Stargell, right field, way up there in the back club. Bernardo Brito, a few years earlier, taking aim at the Oregonian building. Uh, across 18th Avenue, I believe it is. Malloy hits it dead center. And this ball had to have gone over 450 feet. It was, and not that many people were there to see it, like I said, 50 to 100 maybe, and then whoever was on the team back then. So it was incredible. Um, I'm glad I got to see at least one of these legendary things. Well, two, you know, you had um, Bernardo Brito. I didn't. I wasn't at the Willie Stargell game, I don't think, unless I was a small kid and my dad brought me, but I don't remember. I remember going to a lot of Beaver games as a kid uh, with my dad and my brother and my friends and even my sister, and particularly in that Phillies heyday, uh, and then the Twins, 
when they were with the Twins. But I appreciate your time, Willie Stargell. What a great guy, great player, and uh, legend, legend in Portland, Oregon. And uh, thanks again, folks.